Hi everyone, it's Don and I hope you're having a fantastic week. Well, today I just want to bring you some travel tips in general, 10 of them to be exact. And they're not anything ground shaking or groundbreaking. It's a lot of common sense stuff, but people still do it to this day, no matter how many times you travel. Number one, especially for us cruisers, when you're heading to a pre-night hotel, we uh, get to the hotel, what is the first thing we do? We plug in our phones and charge all of our things, and then to get up the next morning, we pack everything up, and we forget the charger sitting next to the bed all the time. People, especially later on in the night after the phone's charged, they unplug it, and they'll talk to somebody, and they'll do something, they'll set their phone down for their alarm, and they forget that charger. So don't forget your charger whenever you're in a hotel room. The minute you unplug it, throw it back in the bag so you always have it. Because if you have to pay for it on the cruise ship, it's gonna cost you four times as much as it would buy anywhere else. Number two comes for identifying your bag. When you're buying your suitcase and everything, a lot of us go for sometimes the cheapest price or what fits us the best, and we end up with gray bags or black bags and they all blend in when they're coming off the carrier off the airplane so get yourself something to identify it get yourself some luggage straps or luggage tags or stickers of some kind so when you see your luggage coming off the tram and off the airlines it's easy to spot and you know where it is also, when you're coming off the cruise lines, when they unload your luggage for you and it's all sitting in that big pile of everybody else's bags, you come off and you have a strap that's easy to identify and you go, there's my bag, there's my bag, and you're off. While other people are going like this. So get yourself something to identify your luggage. Most airlines out there let you choose your seat selection when you're flying economy 24 hours before your flight. Now if you're traveling with three, four, five people and you want to be together, it, it's worth your while to go online ahead of time and pay for the service to choose your seats. I'm traveling this time with two other people and you know the seats are three across in most of the airlines that we're flying in so if we want to be together we'll pay the extra thirteen dollars a person and we'll choose our seats that way we sit together and set it with total strangers and it's a lot easier to know that i can just push my nephew's arm off the armrest because I'm his uncle. Another part of your seat selection is to know where you're going to be on the plane because for instance, so if you have a very tight connection window and you need to get off the plane as fast as possible, it might be worth your while to pay that little extra to pay for your seat to know where it is and try and get as close to the front of the plane as possible because we all know the minute that pilot pulls up to the, to the airport, everybody stands up in the aisle and is waiting to get off the plane. So if you're one of the first people to get off the plane, you have a much quicker chance to get out, get a good spot to get your luggage and take off. And if you have no luggage at all, you're even faster to get yourself to that airplane. Another thing I see people do mistakes all the time, especially ladies, is wearing the improper footwear for what you're doing. Believe it or not, I've been out to the glacier and I've seen people trying to head out on the helicopter to head there in high heeled shoes, like good six inch high heel shoes. No, wear something comfortable. Be prepared for the area you're going because first of all, it's very dangerous. You can hurt yourself pretty badly with a sprained ankle, broken leg. You want to have the proper footwear and you don't want yourself to be in any pain whatsoever when you're on a trip. Just enjoy yourself. So wear the proper footwear. Another thing that can save you money is if you contact your phone provider and find out about their travel plans because all phone companies plans are different. For instance, if I was to do roaming charges in the UK, it would cost me hundreds of dollars a day. But if I contact my Bell provider, I can buy a $5 a day plan that covers my roaming charges and I can use the phone at regular cost. The only difference is, and it only takes effect if I make the call or I turn on my phone. So it's much cheaper to do that on a 10 day cruise and spend, you know, 
$50 than it is that one hour of forgetting to turn my phone off on roaming charges and getting data errors all over the place. That can cost you a ton of money. So just check out the travel plans. For instance, I'm going to Japan and China and I found out for $10 I can have unlimited calling in Japan. Much better deal than trying to call when I'm there and finding out, hey, it's $9 a minute. Number seven, tipping. I know as North Americans, we're used to tipping. It's expected when we go to restaurants and other places. It's customer service. We tip our crew staff. We tip our attendants. We tip when they take our luggage away from us. This is what we do. But in some countries, it's very much frowned upon. In the UK, you're pretty safe. But in some countries like Japan, yet sometimes it's insulting to tip people. They say it's part of their job. This is what they do. It's their pleasure. And so, yeah, make sure, just check, Google it quickly, tipping procedures in these countries when you're going because you don't want to insult anybody and heck, you're even saving money. Number eight, taxis. Whenever you arrive in a city or an area or you're heading back to the airport, and especially if you're in a foreign area, talk to the taxi, people or even better talk to the cruise ship staff or the hotel staff and say how much should it cost me to get to the airport so you have a ballpark figure if you get in a cab and the person doesn't turn on the meter ask them to turn on the meter if he doesn't want to you might want another cab unless it's a set price for instance when i went from barcelona to the airport it was a set price as soon as i get in it said 39 dollars, and it never changed so I knew exactly how much it would be. But if there's no price on the meter, they haven't turned it on and they start taking off, no, be careful because you're gonna to get to the airport, they're gonna say it's $300 and if you don't wanna pay, they call over the police and you're in a foreign country speaking different languages, the police are just gonna side with the taxis. It's, it's, it's often in some ports, believe it or not, uh, if you, you know, say it should only be $20 to get to the airport, they charge you $300, you end up paying them over to the taxi driver, the taxi driver gives $100 to the cop who just came over. So yeah, know exactly how much it should be when you're going so you don't get scammed by taxis in the area you're at. And don't be afraid to ask because it's a good idea to know. Number 10, and this is hard sometimes because uh, I'm in this boat as well, almost. Know your limit of what you can physically do when you go on a cruise. For instance, I still feel like I'm young and I'm in my 20s and I can still, you know, run and jog and I'm physically fit, but I've been through five medical surgeries. I have less lung capacity. I, I can't do the things I used to be able to do. I even find snorkeling harder now than I did just five years ago. I love snorkeling. Uh, but it's much harder and if I go to an area where there's no bottom, it's all water floating and swimming I have a much harder time. So know your limit before you go If you're going on a walking excursion and you walk with a cane and you have a hard time walking up and down stairs You may have a hard time and it's not only for you You're also affecting the other people on the group tour and everyone feels sorry But they're losing part of the tour because you can't keep up and they have to slow down You may have to skip some of the stops and make shortcuts because we can't keep up so Keep that in mind whenever you're booking any kind of excursion or activity make sure that you're physically fit enough to do it and Take a good, hard look and honest look at yourself because I've had to do it for myself because I just, I just can't do what I used to do. And lastly, number 10 is what you're doing right now. Research whatever you're doing, wherever you're going, so you're not disappointed when you get there. A lot of people think, you know, you, you see pictures of the, the, the Taj Mahal or the pyramids, and you say, oh, this, there's the pyramids, and it's wide open desert. Those are movies because the pyramids are surrounded by cities, and the Taj Mahal is in the middle of nowhere, so it kind of is. It's not as breathtakingly beautiful in the around area other than that photograph that you can you can take directly in front. So know what you're getting into, know what it is expected, and you'll be far less disappointed when you get there. And also you'll have a good idea of what to expect and you can plan accordingly. Uh, you say, you know, some people plan 
oh, I'm going to spend eight hours around the Taj Mahal and it's going to be great. And well, after an hour, you're easily done. There's, there's, other than just looking, it, there's not a whole lot else to do. So yeah, keep everything in mind and do your research like you're doing right now. Well, I hope you like these tips. Some of them will save you money and especially don't forget your cell phone charger. So many people do. It's just hilarious. No matter how many times you travel, seasoned, seasoned travelers just forget it on the end table. And that's why when you go to a hotel and you say, hey, do you happen to have a spare charger? They usually do because they're all left over from passengers and guests in the hotels and I, I actually worked at a hotel chain once uh, and they had a good 30 or 40 sitting in a drawer just wound up so let you know just how many times that happens well I hope you liked the video if you do please give it a thumbs up if you want to see more tips more tricks more travel vlogs from around the world hit that subscribe button until next time have yourself a safe and a great vacation